Not very many people are aware that Google has a search engine that's concerned completely with global financial data. And I've divided it here into five sections. They have global stock exchange data, mostly delayed 20 minutes. You can look up any company listed on any stock exchange in the world and find their current share price. You have the company profiles for these companies, including the directors and the officers, the contact details, and of course the performance fundamentals. I'm sure you're familiar with the Google search engine, but in Australia, if you do a search on Google, it will default to google.com.au. Now, unfortunately, those uh, finance page is missing from google.com.au. So in order to find that finance page, you must physically type into the address bar at the top, google.com slash finance. Across the top of a Google search engine, you'll see what we call breadcrumbs. You see I've highlighted the news section on the top there. So I've done a search for Murchison and I've clicked the news button and I can see there's some interesting information immediately available. The main difference between the web search and a news search is the web search gives you all the information that Google's found. Now a news search actually redefines that information into a subset, particularly relevant news. Google searches this information and will return a result sorted by relevance as a default search result. So you will have recent relevant news for Murchison. The next selection here you'll see is sort by date. If you select that, Google will re-give you those redefined news results for Murchison ordered by the date that that news came out. Now Google gets this news from very qualified sources like Bloomberg, Reuters, Dow Jones, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, and it collates highly qualified news on the news section of Google. So if you have a, a company of interest, you heard of a, of a prospect or you've heard of a company that you'd like to invest in, if you go to the news bar on Google, type that company name in, it will return you those results very accurately defined for that company. You can see here there's a ticker code for Murchison Metals and a little chart. What happens is Google has recognized that Murchison Metals is also a public company. And at the end of that news search, it's gone, hang on, there's a link here for ASX MMX. Now, if we click that link, we'll go straight to Google Finance. And immediately we can see the three fundamental pieces on the top half of the screen. Our fundamental trading data for the day, the market capitalization, our 52 week high and low average volume. Now on the right hand side we have the latest news. On this chart we can see the letter A corresponds directly with A on the chart. So you can actually map where these releases have been discovered by Google and you can also see the effect that they've had on the share price. In addition, you can search blogs and it's starting to become very popular now where stock traders will comment on blogs about stocks so you can get opinion. Now I scrolled down the page. The previous page was the top half. This is the bottom half. The interesting thing that Google's done here is it's gone, all right, we know this company, um, Murchison Metals, and we're now going to look at the related companies. Over on the left-hand side there, it's identified a bunch of companies that have an industry or an affiliation. Now, this list changes and it depends on certain variables like is Murchison Metals in a partnership or a joint venture with another company, for example Midwest Corporation, or do they have some kind of involvement with the Mitsubishi Corporation? And we know that they do. I know that they do. You can see Mitsubishi Corporation is the TYO, that's the Tokyo Stock Exchange, and the on the right hand side we have events. Underneath events we have the summary. Underneath the summary we have the contact details. Underneath the contact details we have the officers and directors. And over on the left hand side there we have the key fundamental statistics. So in a simple single web page Google Finance is able to give you a snapshot of any company listed on a stock exchange uh, whether it be the ASX, the London Stock Exchange, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or the Tokyo Stock Exchange. And not only that, it's available in other languages as well. Down here we can see the other languages that the Google Finance is published in. 
Now, Google allows you to assemble your own portfolio. So I've got a resources portfolio, a biotech and an energy and metals industrial, and I had a special one for Rio Tinto. You can completely configure this and it updates dynamically on the 20 minute delayed stock exchange data that's available from the exchanges. So by doing a lookup search, you can add your favorite company to a watch list. You can sort that watch list by your portfolio, whether it's the top 20 that I'm interested in, or the ones that I'm just speculatively looking at, or possibly ones that you have uh, a significant amount of money invested in. And this allows you, without a serious amount of logging in and, and going through a whole platform to find this data stored, it's available on Google from any internet browser in the world. You can go to the airport and check it. You don't need an application on your, on your computer. Uh, it gives you quick links back to the information for Rio. So if I click on Rio Tinto PLC, that's the London Stock Exchange listing. Rio Tinto Limited, this is the ASX listing. Rio Tinto PLC ADR, this is an American depository receipt. You can click on this, you're straight in at what that, stock, that instrument's trading on that market, whether it's the NASDAQ or the London Stock Exchange or the ASX. You can see it's 20 minute delay data, but in the case of the American exchanges, it's real time data. You can set up a Google alert to tell you as soon as a company's made an announcement that Google's found. Now, I'd like Google to let me know every time there's some information published, whether it's in an electronic newspaper, one of Rupert's newspapers, or whether it's a stock trading website's published something, or a broker research has published something on the internet. If Google finds that, it will send you an email straight away saying, oh, guess what? We found some information, and it'll deliver straight to your inbox. Very handy feature. I selected, yes, I'd like to create an alert for that, and it's come up with the search terms, which I could modify. It's come up with the type, the news. How often do I want it? Do I want to archive once a day, give me this information, or do I want it immediately? And it allows you to manage your alerts. You can segregate your search terms, organize them, determine whereabouts you want that news to come from. It allows you to create a complete customized alert, and you can mold this to your financial targets. If you have a trading portfolio, why not go to Google and set up an alert system that alerts you before the market really understands what's going on and you can get the coverage from the journalists. You can get the information from the electronic newspapers that are being published and really be ahead of the market. The key to getting to this functionality isn't natural. For some reason in Australia, if you go type google.com, it will immediately redirect you to google.com.au. Now this functionality, the financial functionality, is not available on google.com.au. It's only available on google.com. So in order to access that, this is the only thing you need to remember from this presentation, is google.com slash finance. And it will give you access uh, very quickly to all that information that I've just put up there. And I know it's been brief, but that's the end of the presentation, Oogle at Google, and thank you very much for listening.